we are here to bring you everything and anything surrounding Porsche. I'm Mike. I'm Aaron. And this is P Car Talk. All right, welcome to another episode of P Car Talk. I'm Mike. And I'm Aaron. And we have Lawrence Van Thor here. Hello. Spending time with us. We, I know you're a super busy guy, and I really, really appreciate you being yeah, here. Thanks. But uh, our fans would definitely want to hear from you. So. Oh, you're welcome. It's a pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. It's such an honor to have you on the show. And, um, you know, a very illustrious career already with many more, you know, seasons to, uh, ahead of you. Um, we're going to talk about your history and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, we've done our research on you and, and things like that. But for some of the listeners, I think most race car drivers and successful race car drivers start in karting, right? So same same with you, right? You started in karting? Yeah. Um, it's actually a funny story because I think when I was uh, five or six years old, my dad bought me like a baby kart. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't wasn't really into it then uh, <laughs> I tried a couple times but they could literally you know pass me by a walking yeah yeah <laughs> walking pace uh, then I had the bad idea to play football for a couple of years where I was uh-huh. really bad in uh, so <laughs> I think at the year at the age of 12 I started to do it yeah more seriously <laughs> and then I got into it and since then it's been uh, yeah you've been r- riding hard huh starting. so your father, since you were saying you're like, you weren't really into it. Was he into racing? Is that why he got you a cart? Or like, how did that even start with him getting you a cart if you weren't that into it? Uh, it was a bit of a family thing, I think. Like okay. my granddad used to race a bit on, on track, um, okay. just for fun. My father took it a bit further. He, he did a bit of go-karting. Uh, he drove like the, the Belgian GT championship oh, for nice. a while. Oh, nice. Um, never, never intended professionally as a gentleman. Yeah. Um, my mom, she grew up next to Zola, the track. So oh, wow. it's been a bit of a family so it's affair. So it's, yeah. it's in the blood. It's in the blood. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, then that makes a lot more sense. Your dad was probably like, okay, we're going to see if I can make you go pro because yeah. I never really <laughs> went pro. So let's, let's see if this can happen. That's really cool, though. So, like, you went from karting and then you did, what, Formula 3, right? Yeah, actually, funny enough, uh, as we're at Cafe Racer, um, Jan, he was mm-hmm. uh, he was my coach in go karts. Really? Uh, okay. For two or three years, ah. so uh, my mechanic, uh, but also he, he teached me how to train, how to, you know, watch your diet, how to be, you know, later on a professional athlete, and mm-hmm. I, I learned a lot from him. Yeah. Uh, I learned the discipline side, which he has very uh-huh. strongly, um, and you know, at that point. You're always wondering when's the right time, what should I do going from go karts onwards? And he had the crazy idea just go from a tree straight away. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody thought I was crazy when <laughs> when I when I wanted to pursue that, but uh yeah, that's what we did. Yeah. And uh it's And you were well you did well at it. You were you took to it pretty well, right? Yeah, I started in the German championship, which was the let's say the second championship, but to start on going from go karts that was uh there was uh, more than enough, and uh, the second year I uh, I won the championship. Mm-hmm. Um, I learned a lot in those phases. With, was it Van Amersfoort Racing? It was a Dutch team, and yeah. Timo and Fritz. He's he's I think he's quite well known to to learn young mm-hmm. young drivers and and teach them uh, how it works. Um, so yeah, I learned a lot in that phase. Actually. Yeah. So how how old were you when you first started um, Formula Three? I was. I think it was 17. Okay. 17, 18. Yeah. Around All right. There. So pretty young. Yeah. Yeah. Considering. Start to get yeah. old because I have to look <laughs> back and count back the years. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. You're still super young. You're still in your 20s. I mean, come yeah, on. That's not about. old. Like Jan's old. Like we yeah. say. Yeah. <laughs> he's, the, he's the older brother, right? He's the older <laughs> father figure guy. <laughs> yeah. Right? So. Starts to have some gray hair, I saw yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. Awesome. Like, so you came up through that and then. You got to ride with, um, like, I guess an Audi team, right? Is that is that basically what happened after Formula Three for you? Well, I did jump to the European, so the Euro Series mm-hmm. after that, uh, which was you know, nowadays the Formula Three Championship. Um, right at the first year, although it was Formula Three, it was still quite different. You know, different tracks, tires, uh, slightly different cars, a new team. So I still had to learn and adapt. And, and that first year went. Uh, with a good curve, mm-hmm. uh, ended up well and finished second in Macau even. Nice. And then, you know, how it always goes in the career, the next year would yeah. be the year, you know, where it's time to prove yourself. And yeah. that went horribly wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think it's one of the worst years I can remember. Um, a lot of reasons. Also, 
uh, also on myself, not not blaming just the team or mm -hmm. the car, but everything just went uh, went the wrong way. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, it was not a good year. And you know, we all have that Formula One dream. Every every racer. Yeah, has yeah. Uh, I think that's where it always the goal, right? The pinnacle. Yeah. I mean, that's everybody who who starts go karting is, is, is already reason. thinking about about that. And my thinking is always quite simple: in that you have a couple of uh, extreme other world talents like a Hamilton and Verstappen, mm -hmm. Vettel, uh, and so on. You know, and those guys they get they get picked up along the way because they're so uh, craziness talented, uh, and they get helped and and pushed further. Uh, and I think there's about I mean five to ten or maybe uh, around five, six, seven guys in the world who are that way and then mm -hmm. there's like a ton of them uh which are maybe a couple percent less good mm -hmm. but there's a lot of them so you need to find other ways to get there where which is through connections or sponsorship yeah. or and so on and i don't consider myself in that uh, a hamilton style of, yeah. of talent I, I think i can include myself uh, the ones where there's a lot of them below, uh, and then it counts on, on other things. So I try to see it on a on a on an adult way, and and seeing for look what is needed to achieve Formula One, and what is you know needed to to not just drive a year there and spend millions of dollars, but to be successful and mm -hmm. and, and and do this until I'm too old to drive cars because that's what I want to do. Yeah, and I saw that that chance. And the commitment needed for that so small to to succeed and so much money and, and investment and all needed yeah that I I thought about this different way of going uh, in, in GT racing with with Audi um, mm -hmm. where I could try and become a professional as uh, as soon as I can and and build upon that to be able you know to race professionally until yeah, I'm too old yeah. for it and at that moment, that's that's the decision I made. I made then, and, and yeah, yeah, next up I joined Nardi. That's that's awesome because, do you think that having mentorship of like people like Jan in your life kind of helped you with that to kind of see that? Because like we talked about it before if, with Jan, you know, somebody who doesn't have somebody a little bit older who maybe knows the game and knows all the stuff and like, hey, this is maybe what you should. I'm not telling you what to do, but this is this is kind of like. Something to think well, about. Yeah, something to think about when you're younger because you don't know. You don't know what you don't know, right? So it's no. one of those things where do you think like maybe rubbing elbows with those right people to say, hey, you could still have an outstanding career doing GT racing and all this kind of stuff if you just, if you know your path now. If you figure it out now and stick to it and go with it, like you can have a great career here too. I mean, it, it's it's very difficult because I would say yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I look back 10 years if I would have known what I know today, I mean, uh, yeah, it, it would be great, but <laughs> unfortunately we don't. Yeah, and there is a lot of people who who try and tell you that, but every time I think speak for all of us when we're that age, we're stubborn and yeah. we think yeah. our idea we is the idea. Yeah. yeah, you're to, like I got this, man. And, I got it. <laughs> you had your experience. I'll, I'll do my own. I'll do yeah. better. But uh, it's difficult, and you you'll only learn through time, and and time will give a lot of answers. Yeah. But for sure, it's it's good to have. Guidance at that point, um, Jan started to live here, so I was a bit less in contact with him. But I had a a guy who unfortunately passed away a couple years ago. He he helped me get into Formula Three with Volkswagen, and at the same time he was in contact with the Audi because okay. it was the same yeah, school yeah. in Belgium. Um, and he was kind of my I never had a manager, but yeah. my mentor manager at that time, and he helped me uh, get everywhere. Uh, and I spoke about him with that idea, and he agreed. And then we, yeah, I was in contact with Vincent yeah. Voss from Dogger T, and and you know, those are all the people who helped me help me at that point. But uh, yeah, for sure, it's always helpful to have people on your side yeah. with with opinions. But yeah, having there's a lot of people in the world who have opinions. Yeah, but you need to find <laughs> exactly. the right the one right for ones you. which yeah. you which you trust, and 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 yeah, it's not always very easy. Yeah, when you went from karting. Because Jan, Jan said this, and it, it was interesting to me. He said he, when he went from karting to Formula 3, it was actually a very difficult time for him making that transition to that car. Did you find that difficult for you, or was it, is it, was it more seamless for you to make that transition from karting to, to going off of the cart into, like, a car? Um, I always... Do, it's very different than I think Jan 
I've never really spoken about it, but I can imagine it's the other way around. I never really missed the karting mm -hmm. area. Aria. Uh, I, yeah. I had more fun and I enjoyed it more being in, in cars. Yeah. But there's a lot of people who are the other way around who miss the go-karting yeah. days uh, because it's, it's just very, very different. Yeah. You, in go-karts, you drive a lot more. Everything is, I would say, less complicated maybe. Mm -hmm. um, it's, 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 it's a different world. And also in hindsight, again, if I go back 15 years now, when you're go-karts, you think uh, the whole wide world is watching yeah. and every race, what you do is determined if you're going to do it in Formula 1 or not. Mm -hmm. But it's not. It's it's <laughs> People do watch, but um, it's all about gathering experiences and, mm -hmm. and, and, and building yourself for later onwards. And if you're really good or really bad in go-karts, it doesn't always mean you're good or bad in cars. Sometimes you can see it's, it's even the opposite because uh -huh. it's it's indeed just different. And Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. So, you know, transitioning from Audi, you had some success with them. And then what was it, 15 or 16 you started with Porsche, was it then? Uh, 17. 17. Yeah. And then, you know, you had your year with them. And then 18 was a big year with Porsche, right, for you and your team? Yeah, yeah I mean, I had a great time at, at Audi. And, and so before, after, uh, I think, 10 months when mm -hmm. I went with them, I, I got my first uh, contract as a professional driver with them. And we won a lot of things uh, together. And, and my dream was always to be in, in LMP1 with them. Yeah. To Le Mans. That was my big goal. But I... But then they discontinued it, yeah, right? Yeah, I was, yeah. I, was, <laughs> I was very close to being part of it. And uh -huh. then they stopped the third car already. So yeah. I'm like, shit, it's going to be more difficult. Yeah. And I remember it. It's, it's a funny story. I remember it as, as yesterday. I was two or three times a year. I, was, I went to Dr. Who. He said, look, you... You know what my my goal is. Uh, what's the latest yeah. update? Yeah. Where I'm, where I'm at? And you know, I I knew I was kind of in line. The next guy in front of me was René Rast, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you know, it was just in that time where they stopped the program. And he he asked me that last time I was with him in the office. I said, "Do you have any other ideas for your career?" And at that point, I was actually in contact with with Porsche, and mm -hmm. that was one of the reasons why I was with him to determine why, what should I do. And he told me, uh, where are you at with Porsche? And I said, well, I spoke to them, but uh, they they need two drivers. And yeah, I'm on the short list, but there hasn't been a decision yet from their side. So I uh, don't know. And he told me, he looked at me, look, um, I can't tell you everything, but um, try and go to Porsche. And uh, <laughs> I'll even uh, I'll even call what then was Dr. Frank Wallace. Yeah. I'll uh, I'll give him a call and and speak a good word for you. Nice. And uh, two days later, yeah, uh, Doctor Wallace called me and said I was in. Nice. <laughs> so hey, he, that's a that was a good phone call then. <laughs> yeah, he he kind of helped me a lot uh, yeah. in, in 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 indeed helping me even though he didn't have the opportunity to give me a chance mm -hmm. at Audi. Um, yeah, and then I joined Porsche and uh, started a new chapter. Yeah, and you have spent time in an LMP car. Uh, LMP2 actually in races. I saw your career like you as a, as a driver and all those kind of like things. And we've seen you, you know, we've seen some of your races in LMP2. Do you prefer maybe the prototype car over maybe the the LM car, or do you have a preference like as a driver? No, I've yeah, I've did Le Mans twice in LMP car. I did one round of uh, LMS mm -hmm. as well in LMP2 car, and you know there are different cars, but it's all also not you know. A completely different thing but mm -hmm. uh the last couple of years i felt myself as a gt uh yeah racer that's also when i joined porsche initially even though they were doing lmp1 at that time what, what was my goal i was like i'm <laughs> yes back on the goal again <laughs> <laughs> no actually the contrary i went to yeah. them and said okay i want to be i want to be in gt racing mm -hmm. i'm going to be in the rsr and the works program in america and i, I want to try and win those races which i haven't yet um, so at that point, I saw myself as a GT racer. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, now with the, the success we had the last couple of years and what's what's coming the next years, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, hypercar stuff, yeah, that has changed now. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we'll see. I, it's it's yeah. Let's touch on it a little bit. Obviously, I mean, I know you probably know more, but obviously, that's all in-house secret stuff. But like us as fans, we're super excited that 
you know, you as a race car driver, what do you think about um, IMSA opening up that, that hypercar series and things like that? Do you think that's pretty cool that all these other manufacturers, it, I almost feel like it's a, a redawning of the, like the GT1 cars almost, you know, when we used to see those. The throwback. It, it, mm. Yeah, in the late 90s, early 2000s, you know, when Porsche was racing a GT1 and, and things like that. Do you kind of get that similar feeling that maybe this is what that class will kind of turn into? I hope so. I mean, yeah. um, I think it's great. It's great for everybody. Uh, I just read uh, half an hour ago that Acura officially announced as well that they mm -hmm. they will join it. Um, yeah. So it's I, I think it's going to be great, and yeah. it's what what was been needed for for everybody. One you know one class mm -hmm. which you can drive everywhere. And for me, it's like it just started. It's I felt I had my success in GT. Uh, the only thing I Without being, you know, without being cocky, the only thing yeah. I haven't won in GT was 24 hours of Daytona. Yeah, and all the other big, ra big races and championships uh, managed to win over the year. So I feel for me in my career and my age, that's probably the last big step to make is to do LMDH. Yeah. And I, I, I said it funny wise. I think a couple of years ago I have one big dream, and it was kind of a joke, but uh, through the years I was like, oh, maybe. Yeah. It's well, win. yeah, it's kind of lining up. It's to win what? the four big uh, 24 hour yeah. races in the world. Yeah. And so, that would yeah, be... it's kind of lining up for you already. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's happening, right? Yeah. So, that's kind of cool and it's exciting. Um, I think you're right. I, and we talked to Derek Bell too about it. And he was saying this is going to be really good for racing, the LMDH stuff, because back, it's going to give that sense of. The, I think the issue with the prototype cars and even started with the Daytona prototypes, you know, when they did all the little cars. And I think that class for a lot of fans that really aren't into it, it kind of gets lost on them because everything kind of looks the same. Yep. It's kind of, mm. and in, as silly as it sounds, I mean, it's visual, right? Like if people can't relate to that car and it's just a prototype, they don't really see the benefit from that, you know, watching that race, even though there's a lot of technology that comes down from that car in the company. You know, most most race fans are like, oh, yeah, they all look the same. It's like, well, they're not all the same. Like, they're all running different stuff. But I think it's going to be a nice visual change to the event where people can maybe relate to the cars a little bit more. There's like, oh, well, that's Bugatti's hypercar. I know what that looks like. Or that's Lamborghini's hypercar. That's mm -hmm. Porsche's hypercar. I, I can see what that looks like. That's okay. That makes sense. And I think it's going to be really, really good and, and, and a good infusion back to racing, I think, in my personal opinion. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think it's going to be, especially by now, and I'm, I'm sure there's more to follow. The amount of manufacturers that are going to be involved is, is going to be great. Because I, I mean, I, I love the time in GT racing. If you go back to 2018 where we won, I think we were 18 works cars in GT, yeah. in GT Pro and with... I remember, I think five different brands, mm -hmm. and it was it was crazy. But it wasn't the top class, and how high the level might have been, and and so on. It's it's still not the top class, yeah. and, and that's always, especially for the outside world, it's something different. And now to have this with the prototypes, I think I think we can we can look to yeah. a grid with those amount of cars in the future. Uh, I, I hope. I think uh, so too. And then it, I think it's another thing, like you said too, as a race car driver, I can see where you're coming from because at the end of the day, like you want to be the overall winner, yeah, right? Like the, I think that's the, the, the you're like, well, and, yeah, class winner. Class, that's still yeah. an amazing achievement. Don't get me wrong. But no, I mean, but I, I know what you mean. I yeah, mean, where you're like, even you want to be the overall champion. We had right? 18 cars, LMP1, they had four cars. Yeah. But still, it's not an overall victory. And on yeah. paper, you won your class and not yeah. Lamar overall. It doesn't matter how hard it was. Or <laughs> exactly, right? It's a bit, yeah. It, it sucks because yeah, it is a it big does. achievement. Because, <laughs> yeah. but at the end of, but you said it, it's perfect because at the end of the day, you want to be the overall winner sure. because that's that's the real stamp, right? Yeah. To say like, well, we, we won Lamar overall. Like yeah. They're like, oh, you mean for your class? You're, no, we won Lamar. Exactly. They're like, okay. It's cool when you go to a bar. <laughs> exactly. <and you're> like, <laughs> exactly. I mean, and it's awesome for your career portfolio too, yeah. to be able to say that. But I mean, your career portfolio is awesome too. But, and you know, let's not discredit like your 18, 24 hour win, because that's huge. That's a big thing. Um, I know we were going nuts when you won. That was <laughs> I was like, this is awesome. I mean, and yeah. I'm sure, can you relive some of that feeling? I know you being as a race car driver, that probably was, was that the highlight? Because I don't want to tell you what your highlight was, but for you, was that a highlight of your career of that event? Because we all know 
everybody who's listening how significant Le Mans is. Le Mans is the the race. It it wasn't. I mean, every big win or championship has its special emotions and and reasoning and feelings behind it. But this one and the IMSA championship were, uh, but especially Le Mans, I think were very special to me because to go back a bit what we said before when I changed from Audi to Porsche I never expected it to be so difficult <laughs> <laughs> because I was coming from a team which was basically everybody was on my wedding I mean yeah. uh, I was with them for five years and Vincent Voss was yeah. my, still is one of my best friends yeah family yeah so it was a, kind of working with my family and then you get thrown into the big Porsche you go you go into Weissach and there's like I mean, 100 million people <laughs> who you don't remember the names of. And, and then especially when I went to America, I didn't know I didn't know the tracks. I didn't know the yeah. championship, the car, the tires, the yeah. team, like nothing. And first time I came to the track, I realized like, like, holy shit, this is... <laughs> yeah. I feel, I feel, like, I'm, I feel yeah. like I'm coming from go-karts again. Yeah. And yeah. It took me a while to get used to it. And yeah. then, yeah, Le Mans was my first big success with mm -hmm. with Porsche and you know in the pink pick livery yeah. yeah which is super cool too right like <laughs> that was a iconic. big a big relief for me like okay I yeah I made something with with, with, with them now as well because sometimes when you switch from a factory it can also go wrong and you yeah. never you never have success again yeah but, it could be a career ender right yeah. at the same time you're like man I might not get another drive yeah. again if I don't do something here exactly. like so that was and especially because it was Le Mans it was a uh, yeah a very a very big relief and and yeah, well, everybody re yeah. remembers the Le Mans and, and well, yeah, I think it's one of those things. It's a double thing too, right? Um, it went from the liveries are very, very iconic, Made obviously. Yeah. So um, we saw that car at Rensport, where it was making its tour, you know, yeah. showing everybody. It's like you know, flexing its muscles, and it was it was awesome, like to see the car, you know, and and now to be sitting here with you, you were driving that car. Um, what a what a treat that must have been for you, and it's an honor for us to have you on the show. It's just awesome because. Like you lived it, like you mm. know, you see it on TV, and you know, obviously, at eighteen pre COVID, that was back when it was crazy. There's a lot. There's you know, seven hundred thousand fans in the camping and everywhere, and mm. you goes you popping champagne, and there's everybody. It's crowded at the podium, and it's just everything you can almost probably dream of if you're into motorsport to see all of that. You know, it's so cool. So yeah, it must absolutely. have been nuts for you to just be like, oh my god, this happened. Like, yeah, it's Le Mans always the amount of people and the atmosphere and the passion of the people especially and then you do the parade and yeah. it's it's crazy and then sometimes you need to pinch yourself especially in the parades <laughs> I don't want to so many people going <laughs> crazy for us and I, and I still like uh, half of I have a, a room in, in our house which mm -hmm. is dedicated to motorsport because my wife doesn't want to see <laughs> a trophy in every room <laughs> and half of it is Pink Pig stuff because I, yeah. I got so much stuff from Pink Pig yeah. uh, accessories and and, and I, I, almost every race week and I signed something of the pink yeah. pig if it's a, a <laughs> yeah. sock until a hat until a <laughs> picture and you're like what is this I didn't even know what this was yeah, everything <laughs> exists so well it makes it cool yeah you know going back rewinding just a little bit I didn't even think about what you were saying the transition from Audi um, to Porsche like you said what you didn't imagine it being so difficult and then you talking about obviously all the tracks you never ran on too yep. because that must have America. been a huge <laughs> challenge too because obviously some of the success is experience like run it being able to run the track and knowing what where you need to be at on the track mm -hmm. and for you you know you get some shakedown you get a little bit of practice but some guys have ran that track 20 30 times and now you're seeing it for the first time so i can imagine that must have been really really challenging because you want to push the car but you also don't want to like crash right so you're like the goal of the race is to win like you can't can't win if you don't have a car to finish <laughs> No, I, it was very tough. I mean, especially, like I said, getting in that environment. I mean, there's, if you compare GT3 racing to uh, GTE or GTLM, mm -hmm. uh, although you'd say it's almost the same car, the way of working is completely different. It's, it's so professional and so many people and, and meetings and, and pre-race meetings mm -hmm. and post-race meetings and <laughs> whatever meeting. Yeah. Uh, and... The pressure is high, and then you come as a new guy, uh, and you have to learn all the tracks, and you, you're racing against uh, Tandy, uh, Pila, yeah. and, and, yeah. and Bamber with you. I mean, just a few, just a few names. <laughs> yeah, I mean, 
it's 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 high level and high yeah. level teammates which you have to compete against even though you work together but yeah 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 it was it was it was hard and and i remember especially first time i went to sebring i was i wasn't very good mm -hmm. in the 12 hour sebring in that first year because i was a bit overwhelmed by everything and that's why i didn't go a spot in Le Mans in that first year no. in 2017 no. because of because sebring was kind of the deciding factor oh i gotcha okay obviously then 2018 i could show them that was yeah that was the wrong yeah exactly <laughs> no but you yeah, should have put me in the car yeah. man <laughs> no but it's it's i mean you underestimate a change of environment very mm -hmm. quickly i mean it's it's uh it's a lot more than just swapping a car does does as a racer and being a competitive person and being an alpha male does it help you when you have teammates like you mentioned like tandy and you know bammer went does it help elevate you too? Like, cause you're competing with them on a constant basis. So it elevates all of you to keep going for that next level. Like, is that that instant, you know, team competition? Is that helpful? You think? Yeah, I think that's one of the, my opinion, and I'm not judging myself, but the, the key strengths of Porsche is, uh, the factory drivers. I mean, from my opinion, it's the highest level abroad, all the mm -hmm. brands and endurance racing there is. If you, Look at the names like Bammer, Tandy, Pile, yeah. uh, Estro, Christensen. I, I mean, it's uh, just the Leeds yeah, it just it just <laughs> you're just naming like all the Hall of Fame list. It's there just is like you, you don't quickly put a couple tens on, on one of those teammates, and but that also elevates your your game because even though you you know it's, we always work together and 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 we, especially in the same car mm -hmm. you have to work together, but. You know, we're racers. We want to of be course. quicker than the other ones. If not, there's really inner team competition, <laughs> yeah, sure. and especially you guys spend so much time together. Even though the you PR know. department says there's not, there's yeah. always <laughs> exactly, <laughs> that's, and that, that's the that's the reason why we're we're professionals. But and so it, it pushes yourself a lot to to be yeah. to be better and the best, and and because you don't want to be that guy. It's on the team. It's like the other guys are faster than you and you're on, you're fast, but you're not as fast as exactly. the other guys. You're like, no, nah, this isn't happening. Like, and it's this is my track today, guys. Like it's over. Like you don't even have a shot. Like mm. I'm, I'm lightning today. <laughs> yeah. It's not, and it's just as lap time. It's also fuel saving and, and all the small details, yeah. you know, but, but it's good. You push each other in, in, on a healthy way. Sometimes, you know, we might get too competitive, but, yeah. uh, I mean, it's, it's yeah. Definitely... When you guys are racing one and two, like at Sebring, <laughs> and like trying to outbeat each other, and it's like, yeah. guys, chill out. Like, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes we need to get your like, mind. Don't out. crash each other. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like stop. <laughs> oh, exactly. Yeah. No, but I mean, it, that must be fun too, though, because it's kind of like a brotherhood, like you said. Like when you're that close and you're competing with each other, you guys are also helping each other, right? Like, you, like you said, fuel saving or something, and you're like hey, what I like to do over here, this is kind of what helps me, you know, like, because at the end of the day, you want to win the race, right? Like, that's fun for practice and all that kind of stuff where you go after each other. But you're also sharing tips, too, which is nice, right? Like, with the next driver, and you're like, hey, maybe maybe coast here, you know, when you before you apex, and you'll save just a little bit more. Absolutely. I mean, especially when you're in the same car, you're only as strong as your weak link, mm -hmm. although there are no weak, weak links yeah. in, 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 in my teammates. But we... You know, I think you share like 97% mm -hmm. of the information you have. You want to help each other. You want to uh, help each other forward. And I think I always find a real class act driver who's quick. He doesn't have a problem to tell the others yeah. how to do it. Yeah. Because um, he knows and, if he needs to make it up, he can do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you meet, you need a lot of confidence. But... Uh, um, <laughs> But yeah, that's it's, part, it's of, part the, of that's part of winning too. Like you can't be hesitant. Like you have to be confident. That's why all the successful race car drivers, you know, people on the outside, they miss. I think they misconstrue that with arrogancy. But I think it's confidence. It's not being arrogant. Like you have to be confident in the car because there's such a fine line between crashing and winning, because mm -hmm. you have to be able to push that edge. Otherwise, you're not winning. No, I mean it's it's. I would say it's almost all about confidence. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're you're always working on a very fine line between being too slow or being too quick and, and mm -hmm. going off. And to go out sometimes, you know, in the qualifying conditions are changing, uh, and you have that one lap, but you need to go for it on that one lap. And, and a lot of other examples, the level is so high, you need that confidence. And if there's one moment where you doubt or you back off, 
mm-hmm. because you you're not sure what you're doing. It doesn't mean if you're taking risk or no risk, but it's penalizing you, and yeah. it's 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 difficult. I mean, yeah. we may show always from the outside it's easy and yeah, we have the course. confidence. Well, that's what makes you guys professionals. <laughs> it's it's not it's not the case yeah. at all. Always, I mean, I often have uh, have a. I'm work. I work quite a lot on, on mental training, and mm-hmm. I have a guy who sometimes in uh, uh, I remember twenty four hour spa this year, which I, I called him in the middle of the night because I was feeling crap and yeah, and thought I wasn't doing good, and and I needed some help. And yeah. I mean, you should never be afraid to get help, but um, it's yeah, it's tough. A lot of you know, you just get a little pep talk. Everybody looks from you from the outside. Like, always. Van, <laughs> you're Van Thor. What are you talking about? You, you guys are gonna win. Spa, you're going to do it. <laughs> we did eventually. No, yeah, it was great. <laughs> but, well, uh, I just love the interview after that. Let's talk about that a little bit because the car was broke on the last lap, did it? Like we were watching that thing from the U.S. and it's like the car was about to go off at like any minute. And even the commentators that were talking, they're like, he's struggling to keep the car on the track. Yeah, I don't think there's tires left. Yeah, that's, but yeah. I mean, it wasn't that. Wasn't it like an oil yeah. line? That's, I mean, what, that's what it was because I remember... Everybody's looking at the back of the car after the race, oh, yeah. and it was like there's a whole paddock or the whole park for me area was full of our oil as well. Yeah. <laughs> no. but it was it was insane. I mean, I still get goosebumps when I <laughs> talk about it because last year was a shitty year. I mm-hmm. mean, lost yeah, of course, yeah. the whole world, and we had our results were nowhere because we messed up everything. But <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. But then in Spa, we we were having a tough weekend actually uh, because. For multiple reasons, and then all of a sudden, at the end of the race, we find ourselves in this position to win, and and Nick was doing a great job and and well, was doing everything. But I mean, Earl and myself, we were okay. Let's the year's been so crappy. Let's just sit in the trailer and, and bring the radio with us, but we're not going to watch. <laughs> like then, got real superstitious about it, yeah. Yeah, and then there was half an hour to go, and then it was the final restart, and it was like gap one second, two, three, four, yeah. five. Like, oh yeah, it's going good. Four, three, two, and like, oh <laughs> yeah. shit. <laughs> You're like, what? Here we go again. <laughs> and we walked back to the garage and we were sitting there and uh, it was two laps ago. Uh-huh. And uh, I think just before last time by, he shouts on the radio, something's breaking. And you know, in the 24 hours, sometimes you get freaked out and, yeah. and you always think yeah. this, but you could literally hear on the back one, like, tuck, 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 oh. this is the sound. And I think my face went like white and, 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 I was like, no, it can't happen. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to jump gonna I'm gonna jump off a bridge if, yeah, this, exactly. if this is the case. And the funny thing is there was a hole, like, the size of the microphone in the gearbox. Wow. Ooh. And the funny thing is that it spit all the oil out on the track. Mm-hmm. And uh, Nick understood that quite quickly, and he knew the lines he was taking the previous lap, so he just drove different lines, oh. whereas the others behind him were almost spitting off the oil. Yeah. So he had to... He could limp back with the car uh, and 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 win, and yeah. the others couldn't catch up because they were yeah they couldn't see where the yeah oil they're trying was. to take the normal normal line and yeah. finding the oil. I mean, you couldn't ride it in, in the book if you. Yeah, yeah that's insane. <laughs> it's, it's yeah, crazy. and it probably couldn't have gone another lap. Like that was it. No, that's all no. it had left in it. Like if he had to run another lap, it wouldn't have happened. It's it's crazy. I mean, like I said, you can't ride a book. Yeah, it's, it's, the best rider cannot come up with that story. Yeah, I think. but on that was so exciting though too yeah. because like the conditions. <laughs> it's exciting for us, not exciting for you guys. No, I know. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure, like you said, with the na- the year and it, I, mean, I started crying. I, yeah. st- I can't say. I no, seriously. Well, myself, we, we jumped. Uh, in each other's well, think arms about that like, too. Like up. like such a tough year too, yeah. and then it rained the entire time. Mm-hmm. During that 24 hours, like, like always. N- yeah, <laughs> I know, but at least sometimes there's yeah, a little bit of weather. relief, but yeah. it was like not like non stop yeah. the entire time. So that's tough on you guys, too, like mentally. And you know, we've talked to a lot of race car drivers, it's you have to focus all the time, but like even in the wet, it's even more because like your visibility's down, everything's down. You're like, it, and then you're worried about other guys that aren't good in the wet and all this other stuff. And man, that was where I was struggling because I, I, Absolutely love driving in the wet, and I, I consider myself normally as a good, good driver in the wet. Mm-hmm. But the year was shitty, and we missed a race with COVID, and then we went to Charlotte. And I, I mean, in all the years I drive, driven in IMSA with Porsche, I've maybe crashed once yeah. in a warm-up session, and then in Charlotte I crashed in qualifying and the race, and I was like, oh, what was this? I mean. 
okay, one weekend it's a dumper, but yeah. you know we get up to it. Next weekend we had uh, Road Atlanta, mm -hmm. and okay, it was different circumstances. We were second, and I was going for the lead and touched with the GD car and crashed again. Yeah, we were we were at that we were at that race when that happened, and we were like, "You've got to be kidding me!" Like, and then yeah, the next race was Spa, uh -huh. and I mean at that point you like. And crash what's the what's the worst thing? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then it started trip, like drizzling the whole yeah. night in the dark on slicks. So it starts wet. screwing with your head, right? And Probably. you're like, I can't, I can't mess up. And uh -huh. that's that's where I got like, yeah, it, it's tough in your head because you're you're pretty much you can't mess up, but you don't want to be too slow to lose a race. Mm -hmm. And you're like, yeah, it's it's super yeah. tough sometimes. Uh, but Especially like you said, like leading up to that, like the other two weeks, because you. You can't not think about it. Everybody's like, oh, we'll put it out of your head. You're like, okay, yeah, yeah that's, that's easy to say. If but you crash that third weekend on the 24 hours of spa, you're yeah. like the biggest idiot around. <laughs> <laughs> so, but still, you want to raise and you want to, that's the time where you can make a difference. So it's, yeah. it's tough sometimes. When Porsche announced that they were going to not race this year, factory racing, um, obviously, when you know, we're not on the inside, were you guys shocked by that, or or you knew that was coming, like internally? No, I was shocked. Yeah, I was. Uh, I was just having a family day with the wife and kid, and, and Pascal called me and, and gave me the news, and I, I was really shocked because that was that was really my favorite program in mm -hmm. the RSR and IMSA, and even though I knew this LMDH story was potentially coming back then, wasn't sure yet. Yeah. I thought, okay, it's perfect. I'll, I'll spend, uh, won the championship, spend two more years here in the RSR, yeah. uh, building and then up go, learning. And, and then I'll go to LMDH. This yeah. is going to be perfect for perfect. me. <laughs> and then they said it will stop the program. It was like, first of all, you're like, and what do I do? And yeah. But you, that was, uh, don't worry about that. Um, yeah, because I think that's everybody's first. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. If, first if thing you're a race car driver, you're like, so where do I go now? <laughs> so, yeah, now, now uh, there's obviously solutions found, but. Yeah, it's a shame. I mean, I, w I really love that program. I love the car and the people we had, and we've built up such a, a great team over mm -hmm. the years. Um, so it was, it was, yeah, it was tough, but I mean, nothing lasts forever. And, yeah. Did Porsche help assist, like, with some of those meetings and transitions where the drivers did, like, you earned up, you're, you know, you're with PATH uh, Motorsports. Did they help with some of that, or was that? Kind of like, hey, you guys are open to talk to whoever you want, and you guys are on your own. Did they help facilitate some of that for you guys, or no? No, it's, it's actually they decide where you go. Okay. So I'm I'm a works driver together with a couple of others, and okay. we get asked what would you prefer to do, what would you okay. prefer the option B, and they decide where you go and what program you do. Okay. From, you can you can have your input. Yeah. But it's so their, they're still heavily decision. involved. It's, yeah. it's basically their decision. Got it. Okay. Because we were, were wondering. The, we're that. the Muppets and they put yeah. us around. Because <laughs> <they're laughs> yeah. we were wondering that from the outside because we didn't know. We're like, well, we wondered all of you guys. We're like, where are these guys going to end up? Like, how mm. is this going to work? Are they, because we were all speculation. You know, we hadn't been able to talk to Pascal like in depth about it yet. And this is the first time we're talking to somebody who's really close to it to say like, okay, yeah, they still have say in where you guys are going because your work's drivers. We just didn't know if it was like, hey, guys, program's over, free-for-all, you guys figure it out. <laughs> we didn't know how yeah. much or how little they were involved. So thank you for telling us because that's interesting to know that they clearly still care about you guys because they still want, probably want you guys back. So that's, that, that's my I theory <laughs> because I was telling him that because I go, look, we put a lot of time in, in, invested in these guys. You know, they might not be running a program, but... They're still running the program. Yeah, <laughs> we're talking, we're like, look, they're going to be back in racing. Porsche is always in racing. So LMDH, when that got announced, we're like, okay, here's the deal. They, those guys, they still want to hold their drivers because, look, these are our drivers, and when we go back and we do this, we want them back to run here. <laughs> well, that, that's, that's what I hope, at least. Um, yeah. I mean, they haven't made decisions on their drivers yet. I think they will uh, somewhere this year, is yeah. what I understood. Um, and, yeah. Definitely, I think I'm speaking for all of us that we want to be, of course, be a part of it, and and yeah, we'll see. What yeah, comes I mean that's just our fan base. Like that was just our theory behind yeah. it. Tell that to Pascal when you have. A I will. <laughs> we'll talk to him on Thursday. Yeah. I'd be like, hey, my boy, you got to take care of him, <laughs> Van Thor. You know he's he's good for this car, man. You know he's good for this car. He's like, 
Yeah, okay. <laughs> and then I'll be like, hey, see, you're in it now. Yeah, we have nothing to do with that, trust me. But <laughs> hey, it'd be nice to tell them, right? But yeah. um, I think that's super exciting, though. I think that's great um, that they still have some control in a positive way. I mean, like, I say control in a positive way because I guess it would be, if they didn't care about you guys at all, that would be kind of like a little, like, feelings hurt, right? After they spent all this time with you and, like, if a program ends and, they're like, hey, I don't, we don't really care what you guys do. You guys can do whatever you want to do. And it's like, wow, okay, we raced with you guys, and, like, we can just do whatever. Like, some people maybe look at that as, like, oh, that would be great to have that freedom. But I look at it more as, like, they're still loyal to you guys, so they still care about you guys. So I think that's a positive thing. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of the reasons why I joined Porsche, because, you know, they, they have always and probably will always do something uh, mm-hmm. very good in motorsport so you have that security that you you know you, when you're a works driver you always race mm-hmm. somewhere um obviously if sometimes the, the people in charge change and you know you have to build up that yeah. feeling again but uh yeah i generally have a very good feeling with, with pascal over the mm-hmm. last couple of years and and it's all it's always stressful when something new new comes up like this lmdh and something else gets stopped i mean am i gonna get my place Still, don't worry about it. Yeah. But it, you know, yeah. you never. You yeah. ne- you are never you telling me not to sure. worry about it to shut me up, or are you <laughs> telling me not to worry about it because you're picking me? <laughs> yeah, that's, but we're all in the same boat, and yeah. I mean, it's up to us as well to prove again what we're worth. You need to prove that every year. It doesn't yeah. matter if I won Le Mans 2018. Yeah. If I suck in 19 and 20, I mean, it's quickly over as well. So, yeah. I need to prove my point and and. Yeah, what's the saying? And, what have you done for me lately? Right? <laughs> yeah, you got to keep winning. Like yeah. that's how it works. And, and earn and earn earn a spot in the end, and uh, mm-hmm. I'm trying. <laughs> so, because you've you've raced, I mean, I have a lot of experience, a lot of different kind of cars and things like that. And we've we've had friends that have been in RSRs and also GT3 Rs. You as a driver is is there a big difference for you? Because I've heard mixed reviews. I've heard some people say, man, the the GT3 R is a little bit tougher to drive than the RSR. And then I've heard the other guys like, well, the RSR is really tough to drive. And so like, is it even a difference for you at all? There's a decent difference. I think which one's easier to drive is not really the question. It's more, it's just different. Mm -hmm. Um, The RSR, obviously you have the engine in the middle, you Mm -hmm. have, uh, special Michelin tires developed for that car. I mean, you've seen the steering wheel. Yeah. There's probably 2,500 different options <laughs> to <laughs> press yeah. buttons. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the way you can do setup is completely open. You can do everything. And it's it's a more complex car, mm-hmm. especially the way of, of working around in that program is makes it very different compared to a program with the GT3R because GT3R is customer-based. Um, then you go in the R, you have uh, standard tires, you have ABS, mm-hmm. you have the the engine in the back again. So it definitely drives yeah. different. Uh, it drives more like a typical Porsche, yeah. I would nice say. Yeah, street car. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, because the engine's further back as yeah. opposed to like further center with the RSR, yeah. But it's, it's different. Um, mm-hmm. I Obviously, the RSR is the meanest 911. In yeah. the world, so uh, if you have to choose things, yeah, of course. Easy pick. Yeah. Uh, and I, I like to ca- drive with cars without, I don't like the ABS systems, yeah. I think it's a bit unnatural sometimes, and it's a special way of driving which makes no sense actually, but then yeah, it's quicker, yeah. Because um, it's a little unpredictable, isn't it, for a race car driver? I've, I've driven cars on track with ABS, and sometimes it's unpredictable with like engagement, yeah. isn't it? I mean, it's it, it definitely makes you quicker, but it. it takes away somehow the feel mm-hmm. away uh, and you have to drive very different within which is unnatural yeah let's say especially if you're coming up a car with, with you know a normal car without yeah. ABS for a while but I mean it's part of the game mm-hmm. uh, you need to get used to it and, and, and learn how to deal with it GTD is going to be like we talked to Jan it's going to be a very competitive class yeah. this year like there's a lot of a lot of firepower and a lot of firepower drivers in that class this year isn't there yeah, there's a lot of cars and a lot of very good lineups. I mean, uh, coming, you can call it down from GTLM, which is just a higher class. It's it's going to be different for me not to be in a works environment, but in a customer environment. But mm-hmm. on the other hand, we have more cars uh, on the field, uh, a lot of good drivers mm-hmm. as well. So it's definitely, I mean, the same big challenge. It's just going to be different. Yeah. Um, uh, 
I'll have to adapt to that also a little bit. Um, but it's, I mean, it's interesting. It's it's something new. I can work with uh, with a new team, with new guys around me, uh, which is always I think a nice nice challenge to try and yeah. and build something up. Uh, What's well, a good mental challenge too, right? Because like you guys are still learning each other and figuring yeah. each other out and strengths and stuff like that too. So and sometimes something new is not always something you know yeah. bad. It refreshes your mind and 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 yeah, see it a bit as a new challenge and um. I'm I'm very keen to to make that successful because I feel Faf, the team I'm driving with, is also very, very keen on on developing in in the future to a bigger and bigger team. Yeah. And I've had some experiences now in the works program, which I can over time, you know, try and 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 implement yeah. or, or learn there. Um, so yeah, I think things going to be should be a good journey. So in the RSR, I wanted to ask you this, and I'm glad we were getting to talk to you. Um, when they switch to the side exhaust for a driver, is that like has the cabin noise gotten like tough on you guys? Like as opposed to the center exit on the rear, like because I remember when the sound the is begin- totally different. It that's is for sure. really ear piercing. It sucked. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I'm glad you said that because. Him and I were thinking, I was like, that has got to be so rough on those guys because you think about it, it's like right here next to you. I mean, we we literally had to change our helmets, uh, earpieces, and we had special foam in our balaclavas yeah. in order not to have our ears See? beeping in the evening. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Well, yeah, like, you got like this much exhaust versus... That's much exhaust. Yeah, but I'm just like, it wasn't, it's just it wasn't be loud, so but rough. it was a, a certain that tone, like, the buzzing tone or yeah. something, right? Or where it was really hard on your, mm. on you. And, and the first test I did with my normal gear, I had my ears beeping in the evening. I was like, this is not very good. I think we should change that. <laughs> <laughs> and then the day we spent a lot of time on it together. And, and yeah. And the so it was that. Okay. So it, that is a real that thing. Like, it happened. Because people are like, man, it's, it's rough on the drivers. Yeah, it was. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for confirming that. That makes total sense. Um, so let's transition a little bit. Um, tiny house project, right? Like you're involved in that's happening here in Dunedin, uh, Florida. What kind of got your interest into even doing that, that tiny house movement? Because if the listeners aren't familiar with it, it's, it's kind of a, a big deal. Like a lot yeah. of places are starting to switch to this, to a more minimized style lifestyle, like keep things more simple, more, you know, clean, not so much clutter, like not big, big everything. Um, what made you want to get involved in that? It's actually a bit of a longer story, but a bit of a, uh, a crazy story. First of all, there was the part where I started to talk with my wife, saying, look, I'm, I'm at the end of my 20s, probably going to race for 10, 15 more years. Mm-hmm. We saved a bit of money over the last couple of years. Maybe it's a bit time to look at, you know, to, to invest in some things mm-hmm. or to do something with that money for my post racing career, so we're we're good. And yeah. Then um, we yeah we wanted also that's a bit contrary, but we also would we we're coming here in the Neden since over ten years. Yeah. yeah. Due to Jan as well and uh-huh. with my family, and we would love to own a place here which we could stay because we spent like three yeah. or four months. You're a here year, all the time. Yeah. yeah. Which we could then rent out an Airbnb so it would cover the cost. And yeah. Those were kind of like two ideas which actually conflict with each other yeah exactly (laughs) one is spending money one is trying to earn money (laughs) and then crazy enough we came on on that idea we found uh, a piece of land or there was an old house Mm -hmm. here just from Jan's bike shop in in downtown and it was very popular so in three days like we bought it because there were multiple offers on it and then we had the, yeah, we had this idea to to build tiny homes and because I started looking at them and I thought they were really interesting and I always had this Airbnb in my uh, yeah. idea in my head and and that was zoned for Airbnb and I was always like if we go on holiday somewhere somewhere special um, and I rent out an Airbnb I don't want to rent like a house which looks like my house at home I want to yeah. stay in a place which is a bit different and unique and special yeah. which gives like you know a holiday yeah Feeling. Yeah, you get the mem- memory from yeah. it. Yeah, and then we came up with a tiny house idea because it's it's cool. Yeah. Uh, it's really downtown because also they're tiny. We could put multiple on yeah. them. Yeah, would, would be exactly. Better, Smart. better for the business. Uh, and yeah, that's that's the way it that's started. Smart. Yeah, and, that's awesome. And I 
I literally started drawing up the, the floor plans. I mean, while you're, in the while you're in the paddock. <laughs> like, <laughs> Sometimes in the evening I was doing that. <laughs> I'm not kidding. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been super interesting because yeah. I've, I've never done, I've never built before. So mm -hmm. come without any knowledge, but uh, yeah, it's uh, they're, they're building it now yeah. and uh, getting a lot of interest and feedback from people. So well, it's great, too, because it's, it's, it's smart that you're thinking that way because it's going to generate passive income, right? Like things that you don't even have to worry about that's going to generate income and people are going to rent. And then also, if you know anybody who's not local, and Dunedin is a really, really nice place. It's very close to the water. It has a beautiful small town feel, beachy town. So it's actually placed in a perfect place, too. It's a very vacation-y type spot, which is outstanding. Yeah, it's, it's just, I mean, it's one street behind main street yeah. and everything's walking distance to the, oh, that's cool. the harbor yeah. the restaurants bars the cafes it's gonna do fantastic bike shop here and and we wanted to make something because with the city it was not so easy in the beginning mm -hmm. so um we we managed to, to get it through and we you're like, hey, I won Le Mans in 2018. I don't know if you uh, know what this, that mean? Yeah, they're does, does this oh, mean cool, anything? But no. They're like, <laughs> they're like uh, what is that? <laughs> no, they were, they thought it was cool, yeah, probably, but it didn't really help me. I think. But it, it's, yeah, it's a, uh, it's, it's a good location, and I, I think, I hope they're gonna look good. Um, oh, they will. They should be finished yeah. within, I think, May or June. I think we will be so really soon. available for rent. Yeah. Let's hope. So you hear that right there? If you're gonna come to Dunedin. Maybe run into some of these race car drivers down here because they're just down here hanging out apparently. <laughs> so, true. yeah, but that, that's, that's an interesting. It's an interesting approach. It took a lot of. Uh, How many in total is there going to be? Four. So four we have two, two bigger units with two bedrooms, uh -huh. and then two like proper like three hundred fifty square foot okay. tiny houses with yeah. one bedroom. Um, so yeah. Yeah, so. you heard it here first. Rent them up. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a fan fantastic idea, and I and I love that you guys are doing that. And you know, obviously, you've been spending a lot of time here too. You know, like you said, over the past ten years, and it just makes sense, right? Like you come here, you spend a lot of time here, so it's a dual thing. Like if you decide to stay in one and not rent it out, that's that's nice for you. And then on top of it, you can also check out your investment when you're here too to make sure everything's <laughs> going okay. Like right, you look at the properties to make sure they're not being destroyed, right? Yeah. So you're like, all right, everything looks all right. Like I'm good. Yeah, I'm curious. <laughs> I, I installed a couple of cameras. I'll have to remove them once we start Airbnb. Yeah. That's probably illegal. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can check everybody out when they're working now if or yeah. if they're not working. So I yeah. can pick up the phone. <laughs> well I mean I think exterior wise I don't think there's any legalities with that because I think that's still secure, secure safety, safety, safety stuff yeah. to make yeah, sure. There's a couple of rules with it. Yeah. Yeah, I have to check him as well. Yeah, so. but I have, I have a guy here who's uh, who I've known since a couple of years, who's had experience with construction, mm -hmm. and he's kind of overlooking everything when I'm not not yeah. here and being the bad guy who <laughs> called everybody yeah. when I'm not there. <laughs> Man, this guy is crazy you now. <laughs> so let's close with obviously we're at a bike shop. Jan bikes, you bike. You guys enjoy biking a lot. Has that always been something, or is that something you developed as a race car driver to help you stay fit? Or is that something you've always had a passion for? It's again Jan who teached me. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like he teach me too much, but uh, <laughs> no, it's him who 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 brought me the passion of, of cycling. Uh -huh. uh, back then he was he was extremely fit on the bike. He stopped because he, he says he has some lame excuse with me, but <laughs> I don't really believe it. But, but um, no, his bike shop is, is awesome. Mm -hmm. It's actually funny enough. I always had a dream to have a bike shop okay. like this as well, like cool bike show with a cool cafe and with racing and he kind of I feel like he stole my idea but he didn't really <laughs> knew about it so no it's uh it's it's really cool and and, and uh, yeah. where i live unfortunately wouldn't be so successful so i, I spend a lot of time here and and, and uh, um, every time when we're here with jan as well yeah. we spend time together so yeah i see a, you biking a, a lot passion. when you're here too like yeah. you know I, I i follow you on instagram too so i'm seeing you like down by the beach you're like oh yeah you're like yeah. I'm really missing europe right now yeah. like, <laughs> uh, you like don't need winter clothes here <laughs> exactly. in europe it's freezing so. yeah exactly and i think when you were riding i think you were maybe still in belgium i can't remember but like i want to say over the winter like you went for a ride after the the, the race season was over and it was something like you know two degrees celsius or something like that it was crazy cold or something like you're like yeah, i'm gonna go for a ride but it's, it's I would say no, it's I know normal no. because it's the only way I can go out right for a couple of months. Yeah, and I hate doing stuff like Swift, so yeah. it's dead or not riding. So yeah, unfortunately, I would 
prefer to be in this weather as well, but yeah. not much choice. And I see you when you do work out. Is that your brother that you're giving a hard time to? Yeah. Like, yeah, Trace. when you're training. Yeah, he lives close by now, <laughs> okay. so I always because I see he's you more the lazy, him the lazy like, ones, He's like so. working out, and he's look, he looks so miserable, and you're just like giving him such a hard time. Uh, he wants to, and every time that he starts, he doesn't. Want, he changes his mind, but then he started. So <laughs> I try to, you know, it's funny here as well if if we do it together, and yeah. we get along very well. Yeah, you know, and we race against each other. Yeah, with each other. So. How old is he? He's uh, 22. Okay. Seven years younger. Than yeah. Nice. Is he fast? He's very fast. I mean, he's yeah. he's very talented. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to say the words because I don't want to say them, but I would say he's he's probably almost has more pure talent than me, I would say. Mm -hmm. But he hasn't really discovered the words uh, working. <laughs> <laughs> around it that much yet he's still young maybe he'll learn over time but yeah. he he's a very big potential to you know he's, yeah. a, he's already a very successful driver yeah. and won big races but uh he's uh he could take it to the next yeah. level yeah. yeah sure you heard it step it up big bro <laughs> says work out man <laughs> awesome yeah. well thank you so much aaron do you have anything for uh, i was gonna ask you what your favorite 24-hour race is i know you do nurburgring spa all the i all like them i mean that's why I want to win all oh, four yeah. of them. But you're gonna win Daytona this weekend. But my it. the big dream is to win them all four in general. Yeah. So I still need to do Le Mans in general yeah. and Daytona. You'll do it this weekend. I feel it. I hope you're in a sexy car. I like the plaid <laughs> on it. It'll be good. I hope. Not that it makes it faster, but I think it lo it looks good going around the track. Let's put it that yeah. way. I think Nürburgring. I always say Nürburgring is the hardest one because mm. the track and yeah. traffic. Oh yeah. Spa is the most competitive one. There's so many amount of cars on that same level. Le Mans is the most, you know, special one, mythical one. You know, mm -hmm. everybody knows yeah. Le Mans. And a Daytona, I think, you need to be, is where you need to be the smartest and the calmest. That's always how I see. Yeah, it. interesting. It's all of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they all have their own yeah. unique thing, like yeah. they always do. Well, thank you so much. Proud to have you on our show. Best of luck this weekend. I know you'll do well. We'll be there as well. We're going to be there on Thursday. So, like, we'll be with Pascal and make sure we uh, drop that line and make <laughs> sure we put you in that LMDH car, right? Yeah. So, um, thank you for your time, and uh, you have a great, great rest of your week. Yeah, thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah. Episode of PCAR Talk. Connect with us on Instagram at PCAR Talk or online at PCARTalk.com.